much as he was absolutely outstanding. But he had good support from Andrew Hall as well. Let's have a look at uh, the lineup. Arun Lal's alongside you. Arun, take us through the Indian lineup. Well, it's not too different. The only difference I see is that Murli Karthik, the fifth bowler, has come in. So they've really put, stuck all their eggs in one basket. They needed to win this toss and bowl up front so that they could use Gambhir as later when they chase. So it's a, it's a good side. It's been doing well for the Indians. Uh, they need to make use of these conditions, especially the spinners have really got to, uh, you know, give it a real tweak now. And just the one change for South Africa. McCain Tini is in the lineup. And Robin Peterson is the super sub. Albie Morkel is the man that's missed out. Justin Kemp is not well at all. That's a concern for South Africa. He is playing, but he is very sick and has been up all night, apparently. The other man who's been struggling, not just for the hamstring during the series, but now with sickness, is Charles Langerfeld. So a couple of blows there for South Africa. And, of course, it's going to be the likes of Sean Pollock and also Graham Smith and Mark Butcher, who, again, is healthy, who are going to mould the shape of this last game. Here we go. The atmosphere is electric. But time it is to start proceedings. A little bit of swing and a little bit leg side. Quite remarkable that Graham Smith, with the strength he has on the leg side, end up just uh, stroking it back to the bowler. Amazing record. Averaging just 13 before that last game against India. And of course, that was his best performance so far. Strike rate, extremely healthy as well. It's been a lot higher than that over the last uh, 12 to 18 months. Operating with two slips. And past the outside edge. There's always a bit of movement in Mumbai up front with the hard new ball. The white ball swings a bit as well. So they'll need to make use of the conditions up early. Coming very close to that restricted area. Now this is a bit of a dry surface, so every time the spikes get on anywhere near, they're going to stand out. They're going to, there's got to be a bit of wear and tear as well. So there's Andrew Hall, right-handed batsman, the other man who had that undefeated partnership in Kolkata. He was 48 of 94 there. But that was a tremendous, tremendous partnership. A great way to win. If we just look back at the night, day night games that have been played at this venue, there have been seven, and only two have been won by the side batting second. So that's quite interesting in itself. We are expecting some due later on, around about 7.30. At economy rate, is uh, something Patan is certainly working on. It is a wicket taker. But you're absolutely right about that, uh, Mike, that only twice the team out of seven have one chasing and if it's the due then there have been due earlier as well obviously it's a matter of perception and how you feel also um, what's interesting to note is that in these one day series of matches versus South Africa and Sri Lanka out of the five that have been played as day nights in the recent past all have been won by the side chasing that's Hari Haran, standing in his 25th ODI. What a stern looking gentleman is Hari Haran. A little bit of wet, not away from Smith though. South Africa have uh, played here twice before and have lost both times, as we confirmed Daryl Harper standing at square leg at the stage in his 106th one day up. Which is uh, losing the final in the Titan Cup in 1996 and also in uh, Jimmy Almanath's benefit game which I'm sure everyone in the cricketing world is uh, quite familiar with. That was also at 96. I went down twice at this venue so far. Looking to turn that around tonight. It's a very good start from Afan Patan. None for none.
Don't be surprised if you see a, uh, a pinch hitter around the place this African today. Justin Campbell mentioned he will be the ideal man, but he's not well. Maybe it's a Boucher or a Pollock, perhaps. Might be an elevation at uh, the fall of the first week. We'll have to wait and see. That's the VIP enclosure on the right, Mr. Sharad Pawar. On the left, Dr. Uh, Ali Bakar as well, as Ajit Agarka starts proceedings. Home ground, of course, for Ajit Agarka. There's Dr. Ali Baka. He's uh, involved here with uh, the replay screens at uh, the various grounds in India. Be a nice buzz for him playing at home, Ajit Agarka. So that economy rate a little bit uh, higher than what he would like. Of course, it's, it's not easy at all for these CM to come back and, and bowl gently in these sort of conditions, but importantly also at the death. 232 wickets. Tidy return. Just sliding leg side a little bit. Bit of movement there. The right length as well. Good start by the Indians. They needed a start like this. A lot of movement off the seam. Definitely going down the leg side. But it will start playing on the minds of the batsmen. If you can get movement as pronounced as that off the seam. Sometimes it can have a psychological effect on the batsman. Two slips and waiting. A little bit of wet missed out by Andrew Hall. But this is a big, big game, especially for the Indians. It's a final situation for them. They've got to square this series, win this one. Had an opportunity there, but he was on the front foot in no position to really capitalize on it, Andrew Hall. But uh, coming back to this pressure game, uh, Mike, this is a terrific uh, start for the Indians. On the left of your screen is Mr. Krishna. Yes, Krishna, he's the governor. And Mr. Sharad Pawar, the president of Mumbai Cricket Association. Leg side, good work from Dhoni. Exercise for Daryl Harper early. Yes, you mentioned what a big game this is of India. On the other side of the coin, and uh, pardon the pun, because the coin has uh, certainly been having a, a fair say in the outcome of these games. South Africa get up today, it'll be the first time they would have ever won a one-day series in India, which was obviously the goal right at the start. Let's look at India's record at the stadium. 12 played, 50-50 split. It's not too far away from that off stump. This is a test of temperament for both sides. The Indians normally coming into a final situation have sort of tended to spray it all over the place up front. But this is a very, very controlled beginning. They'll be pleased with the start, as is she. She's enjoying it. This is a tremendous atmosphere here. It's chopper block. And from all counts, this is going to be a real contest. Looking to lunge on that uh, front foot, Andrew Hall. I just wonder if we're going to see a little bit more bounce in this track, uh, Arun, than we've had at some of the other venues so far in the series. Yes, traditionally so. This does offer a little bit of bounce up front with the new ball. A little bit of movement as well. Especially in day games, morning starts, first couple of hours in a test match. It's really difficult to handle. But you're right, there is traditionally a lot more bounce here. That's Vinod Kamli, another... Son of the soil here. That's fine. It's over the top. One bounce, four. So Andrew Hall has got himself off the mark. And South Africa off the mark with the willow. Five for no loss. We are back live in Mumbai. Straight to the man in the covers. I tell you what I'm looking forward to seeing today, Arun, and I think I'm going to put the spotlight on, on the two teams. And so far, I think a lot of people agree, apart from uh, Bangalore, where the track was turning square. 
I think there's no doubt that South Africa have been the more disciplined of the two teams. And that's what they've based their one-day cricket on, in particular, as well as the Test match cricket, ever since readmission. The discipline is the name of their game. Graham Smith was a prime example in that last game. We didn't see him waltzing around the crease and going from left to right and trying to upset the bowlers. He just played good old-fashioned cricket and batted through the innings. He knows that's away. So is he. Just the one. Yes, certainly. That's, that's one asset that the South Africans have. It's the basics that they concentrate on and they do it well. Very disciplined in their bowling. Terrific in the field. They're saving runs, putting pressure on the opposition all the time. And they've got a lot of all-rounders, you know, utility cricketers who can do a bit of everything. So they've got a lot of options as well as a one-day unit. No wonder they're number two on the scale in the world. And with Graham Smith improving every day and with the kind of innings that we saw the other day in Kolkata, he's the key man. As is Patan. Got him. Metal stump out the ground. That has brought this stadium alive. That's what they came here to see. An early strike. Patan is a man who's done it with an outstanding delivery. Outstanding is the right word. The ideal delivery to the right-hander. Angled away, swinging in, got him to drive against the swing. Good amount of movement and right on target. What a start for Irfan Patan and India. Just what they required. South Africa, six for one. Andrew Hall gone for four. South Africa have not got off to the start they wanted, so it has prohibited the use of a pinch hitter. Jacques Callas, the premier batsman, comes to the lineup at number three. 228 games, an average of 44.17, 1300s, strike rate of just over 70. He is a class player. What an outstanding delivery from Patan. Just everything right about it. The bail is going flying, part of it. But invited the drive, it was just the perfect length. And then that late swing, it's angled away from the right-hander. And then the movement of the wicket as well. That has come back considerably. I think we can say he enjoyed it. That's one interpretation. If we look at uh, scores, the average score in the last five one-dayers played at this stadium, average score batting first, is a little bit lower than you'd expect. It's at 230. Graham Smith will be aware of that. He's one of those captains who does uh, a great deal of homework. You think they've set targets, uh, Mike, as a team? Judging the conditions, the way you'd want to be after 50 overs? Tried to pull out of that on the bounce, though, to second slip. To finish, a very interesting over, 6 for 1.
Two batsmen of the crease now for South Africa will realise that they're more likely to get the odd delivery a little bit wayward from Magaka than Patan. Patan really has started off in a terrific vein today, getting some severe movement through the end, a bit off the deck as well. I think yes, they would have a target in mind, Arun. I think initially the target would be somewhere around about the 240 mark. I know you were saying the 250, but uh, at, at the pitch report. But I would suggest that uh, that's what they'd like to adjust it to after maybe 20 overs, try and get up a little bit more. I would suggest somewhere around the 240 mark. They will know that the spinners for India will take effect on this track, so that just might uh, peg them a little bit. Here we go, leg side. He certainly made the right call about the waywardness. Ajit Agrakar is the wicket taker. He's the more attacking of the bowlers. He's got great wicket taking abilities. But this man has bowled brilliantly. Just take a look at this. Again, just trying to pull out. He was rather fortunate that it didn't carry to the fielder. But it did take, it just slid off the face of the bat. Carlos, that would have been tragic if it had carried. I've been quite interested with some of the comments leading into this game. There's been a little bit of a uh, battle of words, if you like, behind the scenes with the various uh, press conferences. South Africa saying that India are under pressure. They're saying there's controversy around the place and therefore that they uh, may not be concentrating 100% on their game. Frank Chappell, on the other hand, has been saying that, uh, gee, there's not too much wrong with a bit of controversy. So it's been quite fascinating. He's been saying that South Africa are under pressure to win tonight to win for the first time in India that is a way that is a very good shot just a little bit of width and a fraction short as well and Smith has pounced he is in wonderful form what a shot nothing really wrong with the delivery it's played off the front foot on the rise he's found timing as he's found the gap perfectly what a lovely shot Terrific balance, not a lot of foot movement, but he had it covered all the time. Overcompensating, a little bit too straight. That's gone straight through Harbhajan Singh. This is quite a big ground here in Mumbai. It's around about 80 yards, all the boundaries. Hence having to run three. That's a miss. Shouldn't have been any runs at all, but I think it came onto him a lot quicker than he imagined. A little tardy there, Harbhajan. Couldn't quite manage it. That shouldn't have been runs at all. Yeah, the spotlight on disciplines again. I know it's early. However, that's the first little blip in the field. bounce no real excitement there for umpire Daryl Harper a leg by is the result talking about uh, pressure how much pressure is Sachin under today goodness me you need to be a champion like him to actually come out here and uh, perform that's his ODI career in 358 matches enormous enormous all these massive figures but Mumbai does very well, he gets a lot of support, sort of helps him along. I'll tell you what, Arun, it was absolutely remarkable about an hour before this game got underway today in Mumbai. It was absolutely remarkable. I was standing down there with Gulam Raja, the US African team manager, and Sachin walked onto this ground. Well, I've never heard anything like it for an individual. Yeah, that's about an hour before the game. Wait till he walks in to bat. At that time, he was just walking into the net, so he was just... Tremendous welcome for this uh, for this great cricketer. Nicely worked by Smith. He's going to pick up a couple here. He's putting a lot of pressure on Ajit Agarkar Smith. Really not finding the right areas to bowl to him. He sort of shuffles across. Anything slightly short, he sort of just pushes it into gaps. He's a strong man in great form. So a lot of pressure. You. I can quite imagine Ajit Agarkar 
I think he's got to really concentrate on bowling very, very straight and ending the ball up on the stumps. That's the best chance he has against Smith. 48 to begin in Hyderabad and that 134 terrific innings. And now he's good, looking good. Uh, I've got that man short on the leg side, which is a good call. 11 from that over, 17 for one. On the left of your screens is the Chief Minister, Mr. Vilasar Deshmukh. Just behind him is Dilip Vengsarkar, also from Mumbai. Next to him is Mr. Madhav Apte, also another celebrated cricketer. And of course, Mr. Ali Barker. He's already concerned about the spin. The effect of spin in this game, Dr. Barker, just moving that left arm, hand, that left hand of his. How much will it turn, Arun? Well, we'll just have to wait and watch, Mike, but I do expect it to turn a bit. There's a little roughness to this wicket. It also seems to me a little drier than normal. And the Indian spinners can then use that rough nature of the wicket. That's exactly why they wanted to bowl first. Well, he's got a... He's got an official warning, has he? Patan has just been warned by the umpire for coming onto that restricted area. And that's what happens on a, on a rough, dryish surface. Anytime the spikes come anywhere, they leave a mark, they leave an impact. And it may not have been a warning, it's just a caution kind of thing, just you're getting too close. Callous off the mark. This is just that uh, various, very serious looking Harry Haran just uh, having a little bit of a, uh, a squares at where he's going. But he's got to get in nice and close to get that ball swinging. So left arm is uh, love to do. He'll be looking to start this delivery now. He's lined to Graham Smith. He'll be looking to start it around about middle and off. That's what he'll be looking for to try and bring those uh, two catches and the slips into the game as it swings away. It's probably going about six to eight inches I would suggest at this stage maybe a bit more than six to eight inches and he just pulled out at the last minute Smith but he does put a lot of pressure and the way that he sort of just shuffles across it wouldn't be a bad idea for Patan to even start a few from leg stump if he can get the ball to straighten from there setting up uh, Smith for the LBW but it's easier said than done to try and get the ball to swing from leg stump many times it doesn't swing and then you can be worked away onto the onside for runs and Smith won't miss that advancing I'm not sure that's the way to go he's obviously in great form at the moment Smith he's worried about this little uh, head to head between him and Patan a couple of glares from Patan I don't think he was very impressed Well, I did see Smith wink there. <laughs> so at least he's nice and relaxed. Patan is really charged up. I think he was astounded, Patan. There it is. <laughs> and again. It's amazing what a few runs can do to a batsman. Two runs off that over from Bataan. Fascinating stuff again. 19 for one.
first five overs so far in the series have been very influential. We've had five now in Mumbai, South Africa 19 for one, Calcutta, India for 20 for two. South Africa and Bangalore were 14 for two, and in the first game, the only day game, India were three wickets down with six runs on the board in Hyderabad. There is a change of bowler now. Agarko is the man who uh, hasn't been on track. Patan certainly has. Three overs, one maiden, one for three. Still just 19 years of age. Turns 20 on December the 6th. Was R.P. Singh. What a start he's had to his one-day international career. Another left armour. Good running. This is going to be a test for R.P. Singh. Very young in international cricket as well. This is crunch time. This is when he's really got to perform. And if he can pull out a good performance now, maybe get a couple of wickets, that would really set him up for the big time. It's all about believing in yourself and performing at the right time. And if you can do that, it just adds to your confidence. That's a wide one. You've got to have nerves in front of this sort of uh, crowd in Mumbai at 19 years of age, almost 20. It's not easy for these youngsters at, two, at all, um, Arun, is it? Absolutely, not, a, not easy at all, but then you're the chosen one. You've got to have them. Inside edge, onto the pad. He's not going to swing the ball as much as uh, Patan, R.P. Singh. Grant Smith, the shot that he played off uh, Patan. Obviously, this was uh, going to be the crucial head-to-head -head as far as I was concerned throughout the series. And yes, he caned him in the first game. But Patan has come back beautifully ever since. We didn't see Grant Smith try that at all in Calcutta. And I'm not convinced that he should be doing it at this stage with uh, a wicket going down early. He's too good a player. If he bats for any time, he'll be close to a runner ball in one day. As the last thing, of course, they need is uh, losing a couple right at the start of the game after being invited to bat. A couple of good deliveries by R.P. Singh. He's getting the ball to bend into the right-hander. He's got two inside edges on the bat. He's getting the right length. He's trying to, trying to end the ball on the stumps. Now that's what the best way to go about it, especially to Graham Smith as well. Got to try and finish it on the stumps. Let him do all the moving around and make all the play. That's a little bit leg side again and more exercise run by Harper. I'll mention the word again, disciplines. He bowled two on the right length against Carlos. Suddenly tried to pitch one a little short. That's the one that didn't swing. It's pitched all right as far as the line was concerned, but just, just didn't swing. Two wides there. That's the thing they've got to avoid. They can't end up giving 20 runs as extras. They could be decisive. There's four wides already. It's a warmer day today in uh, Mumbai than we've had uh, in the other games. I expected around about 35 degrees, which is quite warm. Humidity in the high 80s as well. It should cool down a little bit later to uh, around about 21 degrees. He's pushing a few beads already. Absolutely. It's the humidity that's really going to be taxing on everybody. It's pretty humid out there. Got to keep taking your fluids in because you're going to be losing a lot of liquid. Not much of a breeze either. I think he's better served if he pitches, up, pitches it up to Smith. There are two slips in waiting. He's getting a little bit of movement once he pitches it up. He's got to get Smith to drive. Not give him too much room, but just keep it up around the off stump. Well, the pressure's been transferred, hasn't it? And this first over from this youngster. A couple of wides, and also he's uh, just dropping a little bit short, as you're quite correctly saying. So he's not feeling confident. Confident. He's not feeling comfortable either. Hasn't found his rhythm yet. That's a better one. 
Five off the over, 24 for one. Six overs gone, 24 for one at this stage. It has been fascinating cricket in this final one day of the first half hour. At the moment, it's Graham Smith, South African captain, not out 13. Jack Callas, 10 balls for his two. And a whole host of all-rounders to come after Ashwell Prince. There's a little bit of advice from Rahul Dravid for the youngster, which is always nice to see the captain get involved and uh, try and get things back on track in the commentary box. For the next half hour, it's going to be Ravi Shastri. And alongside him, the first voice you hear with that of Robin Jackman. Thanks, Mike. Seen this ball swing, goodness me. The ball that bowled out Hall was an absolute cracker. Came down round about middle enough, pitched around about middle enough, not middle out. Absolute beauty, look at that. How do you play those other than bat and pad together and defensively, Ravi? Tighter technique, for sure, and uh, play as late as possible, but uh, that's a classic. Left armer's delivery uh, when he's bowling over the wicket. Now he mentions swing, uh, Robin. Anyone who's played on this ground, anyone who's lived around here, would tell you that the ball does swing. This ground very close to the sea, just about 200 yards away. Very humid inside the ground uh, in the playing area. We often uh, get the new ball to swing in these conditions there may not be a lot of grass on the surface but it's a it's a hard surface plenty of rolling done there and just seeing the color of the surface this morning i won't be surprised if there's turn there for the spinners early on cut away straight to third man it hasn't got to be that wide of third man to go for four short boundary it's a small ground uh, as uh, as grounds go, no, it's not particularly small, but there's an awful lot around the world which are bigger. What's clearly noticeable uh, today in this uh, first 40 minutes of play, 35 minutes of play, is that uh, there's a spring in the stride of the Indians. They know they've won an important toss, but uh, they charged up. Now, Patan has been uh, spoken to a couple of times for getting near the danger area, and there you go, the fourth match on the left in Kolkata. He's a lot further away from the stumps. Now, he's got in close to maximise the swing that he's achieving. But he's having a little bit of a problem running on the pitch. And that didn't miss by much. This is a probing line. There is swing for him. As a batsman, you've got to be sure where your off stump is. And uh, Callis is one of the best technicians in the South African side and play as late as possible just like that 25 for one
enormous uh, scoreboard here in Mumbai. Every name on it. Singh, he's also got the ball to uh, swing for him. Back into the right-hander and away from the left. In fact, he's been uh, very impressive uh, right through this one-day series. Irfan Patan might have been uh, the star bowler for India, doing the damage early on, but uh, R.P. Singh has played his part. Hasn't got all of that, but he'll get a couple. He might even get... Well, he's got four. Goodness me. That was high up on the bat, I would suggest, or low down, but the impression I got was fairly high up. As soon as it got onto the net wicket area it ran away from Agaka and the impression I have now that uh, this outfield is like grease lightning he skids on to you RP Singh a little quicker than you expect but he's a strong man uh, Graham Smith plenty of practice pitches uh, on this ground uh, and it went in that direction this outfield too bone hard referring to it being a reasonably small ground I don't want to take anything away from the fact that wasn't this the ground that you hit six sixes in and over and scored the fastest 200 in first class cricket because it was a small ground Robin but you still have to hit it I don't care what people think I know modesty is my middle name but I will take that world record anytime right, right. That's four. Bat or pad? We'll have to wait and see bat. Just helped it on its way, really. He'll be disappointed because he's drifted onto the pads and fine leg is, uh, is wide. So four runs for the taking is using the pace of the bowler. mentioned we're talking about the ground not being the biggest and that's why I think it's very important for a captain to understand the angles quickly you've got to get your fine leg a little uh, finer and cover the angle well, he's busy now that would have been maybe four had he been finer it's a it's a very difficult one Ravi you and the fine leg himself, if he spends any amount of time there, which most quick bowlers do, uh, ought to be able to work the angles out for himself. I think the fine nick down the leg side is a poorer ball than, for instance, the last delivery, which was more directed at the stumps, especially Smith, who hits it from middle and off, back of the square sometimes. It's quite a difficult, it's certainly a difficult angle to get right for Graham Smith uh, because of his his strength from round about middle and off to middle on the onside. Yes, very strong in that direction. Uh, gets plenty of runs through that mid-wicket square leg area. Missed it. And uh, the end of the over. Uh, a lot of excitement from the Indians, but it's 35 for one. Five for one, eight overs gone. The man out hall after South Africa was sent into bat by Rahul Dravid. 
that's uh, a few. It sounded funny, that sounded like his bat broken. Oh, it's also a few, he's only got one. Yes, he must have got it on the inside half of the bat because that ball swung late. Uh, looks good there. I think he's adjusted well too, uh, Jack Hollis. Just waited on it. The was swing. Oh, this should be a good contest, uh, Smith versus Patan. It's in the air. It looks like Patan's won it. Smith's hanging around just for a moment in case it was a bump ball, but it wasn't. And that's a big wicket for India. He's in fine form, the South African captain, as we saw only a couple of nights ago. Well, have a look at the crowd. No contest anymore. He's walked too far across playing early and literally scooped it into the hands of uh, Harbhajan Singh. He'll take that, kisses the ball. It's a big wicket. The centurion of last game departs for 24, 36 for two. Ashwell Prince, the new batsman, healthy average of uh, 46, just under 47, 350s, strike rate just under 70, more of a collector of runs than a bludgeoner of them, and he needs to collect a few tonight. So they have got in a little bit of trouble here, 36 for two. He'll feel the pressure. This is a massive crowd, uh, this ground packed to the rafters, uh, packed in like sardines, making a lot of noise, and the ground erupted when this happened. Patan getting the big uh, wicket, he's the big fish. Ram Smith, 100 in the last game now, out for 24. Red Chapel, uh, what a good performance by the Indian team. They played good cricket uh, this season in India. I'd like to finish on a good note. That's a pity. It's rather ruined the over in a way. Although how can you be a bad over when you just knocked over Graham Smith? Still disappointment. Tell me, Ravi, this, this double hundred, you scored it in 113 minutes, which is a world record. We didn't used to record how many deliveries in those days, especially for first-class games anyway. Who was, who was the poor chap that you smashed out of the ground every ball? His name is uh, Tilak Raj. In fact, uh, played uh, very good first-class cricket for Delhi, and then uh, he was playing for Baroda at that time. He was a left-arm spinner who used to push it through the air. In fact, it picked up two wickets before that, wickets of Gavaskar and Sandeep Patel. Well, I learned so I've learned something this evening because I thought the only man who'd done that was, was Gary Sobers and the, the bowler was Malcolm Nash. He was also bowling left arm spin that day. Was it Swansea? Another very small round, smaller than this, I think, Swansea. And I didn't know, and I've known you for many years, that uh, you also achieved that feat. Good hitting. Oh, 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 he thought he might have beaten mid on then for a moment.
game. I think we did, unless it ended in a draw. I think we were looking for a declaration, and uh, that's the reason why I was going for it. But I just coming back to this crowd, uh, this is behind India today. I think the Indian team would have put everything about Calcutta three days ago right at the bottom of their suitcases. And this is a charged up India out there. Nine overs gone, 37 for two. Referring to the crowd and the support that uh, it's shown already, I mean, the roar that went up when Raul Dravid won the toss, but it was quite interesting listening to what he had to say to you at the toss, that he felt that uh, right the way around the country in the last or so, and the, the one day was against Sri Lanka and against South Africa, but they've been very much with him and uh, very happy with that. A couple of mates of mine there, the bloke on the left that you can't quite see, Dudley Wallachie. He spoke very well at the toss, but then uh, he's that type of guy. That's what they're playing for, these two teams. And remember, South Africa have never won a one-day series, a day-night series, limited over series in India. That's a big game for them. Good leave. Uh, so he's very experienced, uh, Jack Collis. He would know at the back of his mind uh, what would be a decent competitive score here. There's plenty of work ahead. This is like a final. South Africa win, they win that uh, one day series. If India win today, they draw level. It's a good time for RP Singh to bowl. Two wickets have been taken by Pathan. He doesn't have to try anything flash. Just keep it there, thereabouts, let the pressure build. Well, if South Africa have done their homework, they'll know that uh, the average score batting first here on this ground, day-night matches, is 230. And the average score batting second is 200. Despite the dew. That's four. In the air, but four. Just three men on the onside, and this was easy pickings for Jack Callis. Good work with the bottom hand. He knew there was a big gap between mid on and square leg. No half measures with that shot. That'll take the pressure off a bit. Played. 41 for two. Two power play 
there's a surprise put into place slight hold up in play just waiting for the gentleman on the intercom around the ground to shut up so that play can start again it's interesting we uh, we spoke earlier on about Hall's dismissal and what a great delivery it was which it which it was and you mentioned when you saw it for the second time uh, at the beginning of our little stint here that yeah if he tightened up a little bit on technique obviously in one day cricket you're looking to force the ball but there he's gone past the front pad and the ball's come back and through the gate now have a look at this sharp color similar bowler similar line didn't swing back at him quite so much but he played it right next to his left pad Yeah, the difference there was with Callis, you couldn't stick a pencil through that uh, gap between bat and pad. There was nothing there. As far as Hall went, uh, you could have driven a Ford Fiesta through that. And that's the award for the man of the series. And uh, Pathan should be a front runner. off the mark and I don't know how necessary that throw was I know uh, fielders around the world now they shy at the stumps at the first opportunity but sometimes maybe they're practicing sometimes there's always a risk of a ricochet in the ball going for another four Good change of pace. He's uh, someone who's improving all the time. Irfan Patan, thinking cricketer. up. Subtle changes in the grip at the very last moment. Especially when you bowl in this part of the world, uh, you know, the tracks are such good tracks for batting. You've got to be able to uh, bury your pace. running from Prince is very quick to see a run and he's once he's spotted it he's pretty quick between the wickets too and ball to go out. 43 for two complete the 11th over so South Africa going along virtually at four runs and over having lost two wickets which is commendable remains 43 for two Three for two then, Callis not out seven, Prince not out one. And a bit more swing there for RP Singh. Good day for Tendulkar this, he's uh, had a ordinary run of form. This is uh, this his twin brother. In this series anyway, and how he would like to turn it on How good is that? <laughs> Very clever. <laughs> I wouldn't like to 
turn it on in front of his home crowd. <laughs> and that geezer in the crowd. So back. I think they're still a little bit, Ravi. I think Gambia is still open. I would think so. I think he'll be at four. I won't be surprised if uh, Rahul Dravid gets a position of his own. Because I just feel he's been floating up and down the batting order and he's too good a player to be doing that. If you look at the last game, honestly felt that uh, when you see those uh, the conditions that prevail, it have been a good idea for him to bat at three because of the kind of technique he has. It's a pressure game today where the due factor will come into play. And I feel it uh, won't be a bad idea for him to bat even at three today in a pressure game and uh, get all his experience into play. Keep the big hitters at the back. He wasn't hanging about, he was giving it the kitchen sink. So if he had a nicked it, any more than a fine nick, would have taken some catching. He's uh, flashed and he's flashed hard. If he's got any bat on it, uh, might have well gone over the slip cordon. Well, this is a good over so far. Zeroing in on the off stump, RP Singh. Two more power plays to go and I uh, really wonder if uh, South Africa will try something different and make use uh, not of uh, this one sending some uh, hit up and lower down the order straight to the man at fine leg so quickly it went down there I mentioned it earlier when Aaron Smith cut one to third man if that's five yards wide of the fine leg it's four Yes, and it's uh, the first time in a long time I've seen the boundary lines uh, being pulled in. Normally, uh, there is just about four or five feet from those uh, boards uh, where you'll see the rope. A lot more today. A seat available. No. Twelve gone, forty five for two. Five for two then. And then out the two openers, Hall and Smith in that order. Was your mum watching when you hit those six sixes? Was your mum watching when you hit those six sixes? No, she wasn't. Uh, she must have been very proud of you though. Certainly would have been because uh, she got to know much later. But uh, I tell you what, Robin, there were about uh, a little more than... Uh, Seven or eight. Unfortunately, no uh, television coverage, so I don't get a chance to see it again. <laughs> That's a good shot from Callis. 
When are you going to get a couple? Just a little bit of extra bounce once again from Patan. Yes, he's uh, wanting Patan to bowl uh, the seventh over. He's given nothing away, just nine runs. Just get the feeling that uh, this could be his last over, then he'll keep Patan for the uh, later stages of the innings. Uh, won't be a bad idea to see if there's some turn in the surface and get someone like Harbhajan Singh into the attack. Short mid wicket now. Brave man to take a slip out with this bounce. But, um, I guess that short mid wicket position is quite a good one. Just got a picture of Rana there. He's uh, on for Ajit Agarkar, who's gone off for the moment. Interesting to see when he uh, bowls Harbhajan Singh. I just saw him running to the uh, captain there. He's stretched a muscle somewhere. He doesn't look comfortable. And I had a word with Rahul Dravid. I just see him uh, get his overs uh, out of the way pretty quickly. Single down to third man for Prince. So the ground is, as you say, chock a block already, and it's a working day. It's fairly early in the afternoon. Yes, and this is in the heart of the business district of uh, the city of Mumbai. single and brings up the 50 for South Africa 13 overs gone for two. Smith and Hall are men out. Maybe a bit of both to uh, Irvin Patan. Smith chipped one to mid-wicket and then scored nicely. 24 of 29 balls. Hall got a cracker. Pitched about middle and off and hit middle. Take you through the next half hour. It's Laxman, Shivarana Krishnan and Michael Hesman. Thanks Robin. Callas is a key man now for South Africa. Everything has gone well for India so far. Striking early, as Robin said. Winning the toss, of course, which is going to be crucial. There is going to be some due later. And they gambled with their super sub. Rory Kartuk is uh, in the lineup today, so he'll be a, sk a spin option. Gambia is the super sub, so he'll come into the side when they bat second. Farm Patan looks like he might just be in a little bit of trouble at the moment we taking uh, a lot of fluids over the last 10 15 minutes he's probably finished his spell prince calls callus through fast enough shiver good afternoon good afternoon hazy good afternoon to all yes india have done pretty well considering the fact that only irfan patan has been quite outstanding 
Seven overs, two for 12 for Patan. Hasn't had too much support from the other end. Ajit Agarkar and uh, R.P. Singh not providing the support, going for too many. None for 21 for R.P. Singh. Ajit Agarkar going for 15 in his two. Very similar to what we saw last game. Sean Pollock picking up three wickets. No support from the other end. Chasing a wide one. There is a bit of swing. What the Indian bowlers need to do is stay consistent. And once again in the right channel, no movement of the feet apart from the initial movement. And interesting, the ball dying down on the wicketkeeper. Normally see good bounce here in Bankade. Well, I wonder what the call is here from Rahul Dravid. Is he going to stop with the time bowling seven? He has been taking on board some fluid, so it looks like that might be the, uh, the case. Two for a dozen off his seven. Abhijan Singh has uh, just left the ground. Maybe to get just uh, a little bit of treatment. We saw him stretching and uh, a little concerned about his lower back. Maybe Ajitagaka might come back for one or two because he didn't get it right. Well, not one or two, for a bit of a spell. He didn't get it right at the start of the game. Nicely played by Prince. Back with a square. Four runs. His first boundary. Takes his time to settle in. Ashwell Prince. Once again, the left right combination for South Africa. Very short indeed on a good batting pitch. Good batsmen have a lot of time to make the adjustment. In a very good position. Now the second slip has come off and more protection square of the wicket on the offside. Amazingly, there's three very close to each other, square offside. He looks straight to one of them. Five off the over, 55 for two. a little bit like the skyline of Mumbai a couple of tall buildings, a couple of short ones a few more satellite dishes though around the place in uh, Mumbai than you see there just the two at the moment but a wicket inside the first five that's what uh, has put South Africa on the back foot two for 36 as well when Smith departed and it is uh, Ajitagaka at his home ground to resume going at over seven and a half, or bang on seven and a half to the over so far and the two that he has bowled Abhijan Singh, by the way, is still off the park. Nicely played by Callas, but again, straight to the man in the covers. It's not going to be uh, too difficult to work out what Callas is going to try and do here. He will obviously look to, uh, to pounce on anything that is a little bit wayward. There's a look at uh, the returns so far from the free bowlers, and Patan has been magnificent. But he won't do anything too extravagant. He'll be thinking about batting the majority of these 50 overs, Callas. Ashwell Prince is a runner. If he gets a loose one, he'll put it away, but he'll look to just uh, push into the gaps and rotate the strike, alternate the strike that way, just run him around. Oh, that's good fielding. Suresh Rana, a youngster. He's fielding for Harbison and Singh. Very quick off the blocks. Takes good anticipation to do that. And the timing of the dive, excellent. Fielding stands up. This Indian team has gone up quite a few notches. Do they work hard at their fielding drills though before a day's play? They're out there running around, shying at stumps. We saw in that game in uh, Bangalore how often they hit the stumps. 
did see the bowling analysis uh, a couple of deliveries ago. I think they need to tighten up Ajit Agarkar and R.P. Singh. Just a couple of overs in his first spell. It's a good time to come back and bowl a tight spell, maybe four or five overs in this. R.P. Singh is going at five and over. There is a bit of swing for the bowlers. Got three balls left now for the end of power play number two. Slap that away and four runs. That is a very good shot. Great power from Callis. Again, too short, too wide. Too much time to free his arms. And the ball rockets to the fence. This is a fast outfield. The practice pitch is just about 40 yards from the main square. It's broken the shackles too, that shot from Callis before that uh, delivery. There'd only been 14 runs off the last four and a half overs. A bit of a waltz around from Callis and he's got that away leg side. Gee, this outfield is very quick today. That is good ground covering too. Patan, he must be okay. He certainly will be okay, and that's great commitment. Had to cover quite a bit of ground to his left. Great shot from uh, Jacques Hallis. For a few moments, he thought he certainly had a boundary, but look at this. He can bat, he can bowl, and this is magnificent to watch. He enjoyed it. Patan. Tucked around fine and four. That has now developed into a very good over for South Africa. A frustrating one for Ogaku who hasn't got it right at all today in the three overs he's bowled. He's gone for 25. There's 10 off that over, 15 gone now, 65 for two. And we'll take a drinks break. Patan has been outstanding. Ogaka hasn't got it right, and uh, Singh has been under a little bit of pressure, but's got it back on track after an indifferent first over, where he bowled uh, a couple of wides. And a good stand now. 29, 40 deliveries, 15 overs up, so power play number two has uh, been finished. I'm sure that Rahul Dravid is going to call the third, or is he? Looks like he's not going to take it at this stage, which is interesting in itself. No, definitely not taking the third one. That surprises me, Shiva. It's only a big surprise. It's one for the over as far as the bounce is concerned. But 65 for 2 and 15, going at 4.29. Rahul Dravid should have taken the power play. Maybe the introduction of a spinner and see if one of them likes to go over the top so he can have more protection. We'll just have to wait and see. Yeah, that's going to be quite interesting. Harbhajan Singh is now back onto the park. He's lurking at uh, mid-on. I'm sure it's not going to be too long before uh, he's introduced. And maybe it might be a situation, you're right, Shiva, where uh, he's going to try and tempt one or two of the batsmen. Oh, he's just uh, asked. He's just asked Daryl Harper. He's just pointed out, I think, to Rahul Dravid that uh, he's forgotten the power play. Maybe. He's leaking, is Daryl Harper today. Leaking badly. I wonder if Dravid has forgotten, because Graham Smith certainly forgot in the last game. I think what it does tell us, Shiver, is that uh, Harbison's quite keen to get that other power play out the way before he comes into the attack. Maybe just a little bit of protection for the spinners to start off early. And if they do pick up a wicket or so, then the new batsman you can always attack. But these are interesting aspects. We'll have to wait and see what the captain does. This Murli Karthik and Harbhajan, two front-line spinners for India. Ah, there's a bit of a clue. I wish that back's okay. Unless he's trying to signal the power play again. 
He'll be quite happy as long as he picks up wickets, Harbhajan. Bit of a disappointment for me when you play five bowlers, you'd expect at least four of them to bowl well. And here, number two and number three, look at the economy rate. Especially when Patan has uh, created the pressure by picking up two wickets. They were 36 for two at that stage. And Graham Smith was dismissed. But far too many easy runs coming for South Africa. The umpires have uh, got a bit of assistance today. Of course, we know that they've got the guidelines for the wides, but uh, umpire Darrell Harper's also got this first time I've seen this. There's a dotted line going from middle stump back behind the umpire so that he can uh, see that he's exactly in line with that uh, the middle stump, middle to middle. There's one behind that middle stump as well, which is uh, being hidden right now. That's a very good over. And the shot at the stumps with a direct hit. 67 for two. We have two things to watch for here. One, Harbhajan Singh has been introduced into the attack, and let's see if there's going to be some turn, which is going to be crucial. Two, is the second power play, correction, the third power play about to be called. Did Driver forget to call the third? There's been a bit of consultation between Driver and also the umpires. The other thing we need to uh, have a bit of a, uh, a look at is how long was Harbhajan Singh off the park? Is he allowed to come in? and bowl again straight away. He was off for two overs. So that's the uh, the other thing that we need to address. And it looks like Harbhajan is not allowed to bowl. He'd marked his run-up. He'd uh, bowled one or two practice deliveries. And umpire Darrell Harper got involved straight away. Spotted that, so Harbhajan's got to wait a little bit longer. And Murali Kartik is going to be uh, into the attack. So let's see if the power play is called. The third one from uh, Rahul Dravid. Ah, there you go. So he obviously did forget to call that uh, third power play and they snuck in an over but we still need to watch very closely Shiva to see if this track's going to turn just get the feeling it will it won't be on the quicker side there will be so slow turn for the spinners he's got to get a lot more consistent Murli Karthik has some fantastic games and some ordinary ones somewhere along the lines he needs to be consistent Bowling is 10 overs, say for about 45, picking up two wickets in the middle will help. Got a slip in place. Rahul Dravid. And allowed two men only outside the circle. Fond memories, of course, uh, for you, Shiva. I know that uh, Robin was talking to Ravi Shastri about his six sixes, the world record here. Luxman Shiva Ramakrishman, who was uh, a wizard of a leg spinner. 12 wickets in his second test match at uh, 18 years of age. Is that right? Dead right. It's always been a good pitch uh, for any kind of bowlers. There you go. I don't want to talk about myself, Hazy. How did they squeeze that name in? How did your mother go when you were a child and you had, she had to write your, uh, your name on the back of your school jumper? Every time you say my name, you get blessed. It's got the names of all gods. We go even further, Lakshman, Shiva, Rama, Krishna. You're just getting blessed by doing commentary with me. I guess I'm due. Hesitation from Prince. Slight fumble from Tendulkar. 
Kobo ticking along. So good partnership between these two. 33. Shahkhal has done the hard work. He's on 24-41. India don't want him to bat very much longer. He's a good player. It has this ability of playing the big innings. Jacques Hallis bats till the end of the 50th. And South Africa can look at about 270. It's a strike rate of uh, high 50s. In fact, mid 50s now for Callis in this innings. Let's look at his uh, career this series. Average of 94 now, 68 not at his best. Career average of 44 against India, averaging almost 61. Prince is going at a strike rate of just over 35, so it's been reasonably sedate right now. That's uh, a no ball, so that'll be bowled again. And 35 off 52 balls, but it's all about consolidation for the visitors at this stage. They need to post a score very close to the 240 mark. That'll be my call, maybe 250 if someone plays exceptionally well. Average score here batting first in the last five has only been 230. I think you can add uh, some runs for the due factor and add about 30 runs for this unbelievable crowd. 72 for two. presentation later today which will be conducted by Ravi Shastri who will be uh, obviously challenging the two captains and the man of the match and also the man of the series who will be driving away in that magnificent Ford Fiesta Agaka back into the attack now he hasn't had a good day so far And I guess, Shiva, what the South African batsman Prince and Callis will be thinking now is that uh, Agaka has not got things on track at all. He is someone who will generally bowl 10 overs. Driver will be looking for that performance from him, but they'll be looking to uh, just target him a bit now, won't they? He's not very high on confidence when you go for 25 in your first three. I'd like to see the slip removed and probably have a shot mid wicket. Seeing a slip in place, plenty of fielders on the offside. It's just three men on the leg side. There's a fine leg. Man in front of Spain in the umpire and a mid on. And Aji Tagakar, if he gets a slip out and has somewhere a shot mid wicket between the man at mid on and square leg, can bowl a lot straighter. Would be much better off. I'm not crazy about Agarka's body language at the moment. I know it's uh, very tough for him and uh, not where he wants to be. Can't get over seven and over, but he's just meandering back to his bowling mark. He hasn't got a spring in his step at all, uh, but stooped with the, uh, the shoulders, and his pace has dropped dramatically. Yes, that was a change down that last one, 114 k's per hour. But, uh, he hasn't got anywhere near that 138 for a couple of overs, averaging around about 130 only. That's much better. Much straighter and fuller. But we haven't seen too much of Ajit Agarkar going around the stumps to the left-handers. He doesn't do that very often. It's going to be quite interesting as well to see if, uh, if Justin Kemp comes in next. That's where he is uh, listed to come in. There was a very long discussion between Graham Smith, the doctor, Dr. Mohammed Musaji, and also Mickey Arthur. Literally five minutes before the toss, Justin Kemp was involved. 
I had a bit of a feeling then that maybe it was going to be another late withdrawal like McCain did in the uh, the previous game in Kolkata. But, uh, Kemp is not uh, a healthy chap at the moment. You can't see if oh there is just to the left, just to the left of screen. I'm sure there is going to come in next. That is good stuff from Magaka. Good comeback, a maiden from him, 72 for two. Run rate is bang on four now. Murali Kartik, interesting enough, just uh, the one over. Just to tick the time away so that Harbajan come, can come into the attack. It's been pretty impressive, Harbajan Singh, without taking too many wickets. The economy rate has been quite outstanding. It's bowled a bit low, it's exceptionally well. Here, what India need is Harbhajan to pick up the wicket of Shah Khalis. Two men in the deep. There's a man at deep mid-wicket and deep square. And also a slip catching. There is protection. We do come back for the second. Prince is going to the danger end. See, that's good fielding. I think he would have had a much better result had he opted for the cover drive. No protection on the offside in the deep. And fetching it from way outside the line of off stump. That's the danger with Harbhajan Singh, of course. Callis be thinking about uh, playing with the spin. He has the top spinner. And the deucer as well, just goes a little bit the other way, which Callis has worked nicely. They read it off the pitch, Jacques Callis. Ball quicker through the air, 97 Ks. There's the importance of playing late and watching the ball till the very end. Going around the stumps to Prince straight away. They've taken up a few balls this partnership. The last thing they need now is a wicket to fall. 39 runs off 63 balls. If they kick on, that's the important thing here. If they kick on, then that'll be fine. That'll get South Africa to a good total. Can't afford to lose a stick now. Particularly with Harbison just being introduced. We know that uh, he can be extremely damaging if he strikes early. Been a good start, just three runs coming so far in this over. So if it can look like they're opting for wickets in hand of the death. Certainly some variation from Harbhajan Singh in his first, three from it, 75 for two. overs gone and the third power play two overs to go in that in the commentary box now for the next half hour it's going to be Arun Lal and Ravi Shastri thank you Mike
He's a model of uh, concentration at the moment, Carlos. 28 from 49 balls. Just trying something different, trying to upset uh, other players by chipping down the track. Both of them have consumed quite a few deliveries. Both of them are well set now. Carlos, 28 of 50. Just trying to change things around a bit. Disturb Ajit Agarkar because Agarkar was very expensive in his first three overs. Went for 25 and came back with a maiden. But now the onus is on these two to really play a long innings. One thing you can see with Agarkar in this spell, he's uh, just cut down a bit on pace. Just concentrating on bowling a good line. It was expensive in his uh, earlier spells. Well, he's a wicket taker, Ajit Agarkar. So his, I think his brief has been always to go flat out and take wickets. Didn't work for him today. Fortunately, Pathan did a bit. Good fielding. The Indians are really on the ball today. He's very good in that area. Jobrat Singh anticipates well. Good surprise delivery. We could see the extra effort there from Agarkar. This is a terrific comeback by Ajit Agarkar. He's doing everything right. This is a surprise. Just aborted at the last instant. Carlos. Really beautifully directed short delivery. So that's now 11 deliveries, 11 dot balls that Ajit Agarkar has managed to bowl without conceding a run, obviously. Terrific comeback for him. He'll get a single and another good tidy over. 20 overs have been bowled, 76 for two. Six for two. India giving nothing away. Harbhajan Singh continuing. Now uh, this is the last over of uh, power play, and I'm sure Callis will be aware of that. Now, uh, if he's going to go after Har Harbhajan Singh, he'll uh, take a look at the field, pick his spots. The field's up at the moment, both mid on and mid off in the ring. be itching to uh, go down the ground probably even take the aerial route those are the two fielders outside that you see deep on the onside for Gullis there's nobody on the straight field that's where he's got a target but I'm getting the impression that something's got to give here the Indians have had a bit of a stranglehold for the last five seven overs Gullis has played 57 for his 29 Prince 31 for his nine they would be under a little bit of pressure. But they also have to keep their wickets intact now. He's wearing it nicely here, uh, Harbhajan Singh. Good variations of speed. This is a good period of play for the Indians. Just 10 runs have come in. Uh, this third power play. Mm. 
So the pressure building. That's up in the air. Simple catch. Well, Arun Lal, something had to give. It's happened. Well, you could really sense that something had to give, but not the right kind of happening for South Africa. They just what they didn't want. Ashwell Prince took his time to get settled and then just played a tame shot. Soft dismissal. Harbhajan has his man. The Indians have caught the hoop. 77 for three. Prince gone for nine. Boucher comes out to the middle. Over 200 matches, so the experience is there. Comes in at a time with uh, India calling the shots at the moment, 77 for three. So this is really a good period for the Indians. Ajit Agarkar being very, very tight. And of course, the spinners already making an impact. Take a look at this again. Trying to sweep against the turn. A little bit of extra bounce. Top edge and a really tame dismissal. It got a little stuck there, Ashwood Prince. 9 of 32. But another wicket goes down for South Africa. And... Uh, this could put a lot more pressure on uh, Jacques Callas as well. Harbhajan saying he's the man they want to keep away from the wickets column. He's the danger man. Now a slip in place for the new man, Boucher. Boucher, a very busy player. And it's also the time where Agarkar doesn't need to experiment too much. Now that a wicket has been taken, the South Africans will have to rethink their strategy, Callis in particular. So it's a good time to string in a few more tight overs. Well, so far so good, you must be saying, Greg Chappell. I think I detected a hint of a smile there. Just a very tense situation for everybody. Good start for them. That was close. Eighty for three. Harbhajan Singh continuing. 
that he's been the informed bowler right through this one day season in the matches against Sri Lanka and the matches against South Africa he's been very consistent Yes, you're right, Ravi. He's, from his demeanor, you can make out that he's very comfortable there at the wicket. Very confident. He's at the peak of his performances. Against Sri Lanka, he got six wickets. In this series, he's got four. He's regularly getting wickets, but he's bowling well. He's feeling good about himself. He's coming from around the wicket, which he never did towards left-handers. Also, he's a more relaxed, normally a very excitable person, but I find him a lot more relaxed now. His body language is a lot more relaxed. He's trying a lot, trying all the variations that he possesses. He gets a single on the onside and what's good to see also from a Dravid's point of view, he's using his uh, best fielders nicely. He's got them in the important positions. Now when an off spinner is bowling to a right-hander, the busy area is a short fine leg and the man in front of the umpire. He's got Kev, one of his better fielders, and then he's got Yuvrat Singh at short fine important positions those the offside not all that important so he's uh, got the Tendulkars the Sevags uh, Murli Karthik on the offside the better fielders are on the onside very important that you use your fielders properly 83 for 3 So the Indians are tightening things up. Three important wickets. Not too many big overs for the South Africans today. Brilliant. Once again, Yograd Singh. Now this is not his natural side. He's a left-hander. Have a look at that. And really... The reaction time on that was minuscule. That was a terrific hit. Right from the meat of the blade. And Yuvraj pounced on it in a flash. Probably reflecting some of the sun's rays into his eyes. He just sort of turned them around a bit. They're not required anymore, at least not in this innings. So they can be put anywhere. That will be a wide. Now fielding uh, such an important aspect of this uh, one-day game. When you see uh, fielding of this sort, it just spreads within the team. It uh, lifts the spirits of the other players in the field. They want to do the same thing. getting hold of it as if uh, Callis was expecting that short delivery and even Callis now he's got stuck a bit I think uh, what he needs is uh, to rotate the strike a bit because otherwise the pressure is building on him as well indeed the pressure is on South Africa but he managed to roll his wrists over the delivery keep it down the two deep fielders for the miscued hook as well. Seem to be fielders everywhere. And he just keeps finding Yuvraj. 
Uh, you need very sharp reflexes in that position. Have a look at this. 0.7 seconds to react. And the pace of that shot, Ravi, there's no reaction time. And then you've got to be good enough to get your body behind it. But this was relatively simpler. But the previous one was absolutely brilliant. Interesting to see Yuvraj uh, in that position. As the bowler runs in, he starts off. Very important that you're balanced. Now, watch there. Now, from that position, he can go in any direction. Now, luckily for him, on that occasion, the ball came straight to him. in the gap almost did him in with that slow delivery Ajit Agarkar sucked him into the shot but Kalis finally managing to just control it and playing it into the gap wonderful slow delivery not much indication there the slow delivery it was bolted around 120 that split finger good effort Bahar Bajan he's got a good arm too two runs to end the over 87 for three many years five bowlers used just one over for Murli Kartik Harbhajan Singh is continuing I think uh, Dravid will have to look at Kartik at some stage what's interesting to see Arun the power plays are over but still if you look at the field the field is up for Callis As many as seven in the ring for a batsman uh, reasonably well set. There's a lot of mind games going on. They know that Carlos can't afford to lose his wicket now. The invitation is there to go over the top. The straight field is vacant. It's low and long off and long on. So just playing some mind games there, Rahul Dravid. Just the two outside, even for Boucher. But he's relatively new at the crease. Both of them favoring the sweep shot against Harbhajan Singh because he's getting a little turn. And the ball is coming off a little slower than normal. The horizontal bat shots being favoured. Also very wary of his Dusra. Should they go down the track and really miss it, that could be real tragedy for South Africa. Especially if Carlis would lose the wicket now. So singles are the order of the day. And that's what they're trying to obviate the Indians. They don't want to give the singles away. No boundaries in the last 10 overs. Also, Ravi, you mentioned Murli Kartik. Now he's got nine overs to bowl. If he doesn't come on now, he's going to be bowling till the death. He's almost dead. This is the 25th over. So he's got to have at least 18 overs to bowl Kartik his uh, quota. So he must get him on to bowl at least four or five over spell now. This is excellent bowling. Subtle variations. Oh, he gets a hand to it, Sevag.
It's been a long time since that last boundary was hit. We're at the halfway stage of this uh, South African innings. Ajit Agarkar giving way to the uh, left arm of Murli Karthik. Now, spinners at both ends. It's also a time where India will try and get through their overs quickly. There is a slip in place. Five men in the ring. That uh, includes the man at slip. is content just churning the singles over he's got to play the sheet anchor role he's got to be there till the 50th over and if he is there he'll certainly reach about 250 so they've got to play around him now yes and that, that's why i feel it's Boucher who has to be the the aggressor here he's got the shots to upset the spinners the the sweep The slip goes out, Rahul Dravid positions himself at short third. Ball coming off a little slow off the surface, enough time for Carlos to go on the back foot and keep the scoreboard ticking. The singles are coming with ease, now Rahul Dravid something new he's got to do. And he does. He brings in another fielder into the 30 yards. He brings the long off into mid off. So now there's six with a slip. That's the length. That's where he's got to be bowling. Murli Karthik. You can see the frustration just beginning to show now. The field is up. The Indians really throwing the bait at uh, Boucher and Callis, saying uh, the field is up, go down uh, the ground. Can't get it away. There's three of the over. It's 95 for three. Mrs. Chapel, Judy. She'll be seeing a lot of her husband. But I mean, uh, if he's not uh, with the team, she's just got to open a newspaper in the morning. He's done a good job with his team, uh, Greg Chappell, hard man. Seen a lot of him in the uh, papers. Bob bumped into him this morning, Arun, and asked him, how's that finger doing, Greg? Still hurting? What? He said, don't you start now. 
Yes, indeed, he's doing a fine job with the Indian side. But he, he's got to learn to smile a little more. <laughs> you mean send him to Calcutta more often? Just one off the over, 96 for three. Six for three, Karthik continuing. So runs still coming in a trickle, just uh, ones and twos. The boundaries have dried up. Just get the feeling uh, we might just see this man Boucher taking a few more risks with the field up. To tell you more, Robin Jackman is with Lakshman Shivaram official. Thanks, Ravi. Yeah, it's a really interesting stage of this innings now because. Something's got to happen from a South African point of view. They score four and over from here on in. They won't get the 200. Six and over gives them an average first inning score. And about the 230 mark. Oh, didn't quite carry. So nearly carried. To Yuvra Singh, who's fielded quite brilliantly there. Just marginally shot, trying to create the width. Jacques Hallis. Cheer shot of Yuvraj Singh. Very difficult to dive in front. I'm only going to get one for that. It's three from four balls. India will be pretty happy with this. Smith won't. Sweep shot from Belcher. Brings up the 100 for South Africa. Run rate at the moment 3.59. Yes. It's taken them a long time for the second 50. It's been some good bowling by the Indians in that period. from the over 101 to 3 He's been very difficult to get away. Five overs, one for 13. Well, the fielders were excited. Jacques Carles was looking for the white call. No impact. It's a turn and bounce. Maybe the umpire could see a lot of middle and leg stump, not giving it a wide. He wasn't happy with the call. Previous delivery. The return and bounce going down the leg for Harbhajan. And 
Hadley had a word with the umpire then, you know, along the lines of, you know, wasn't that last one a wide? Something like that. Just a friendly little chat. Great delivery. It was the top spinner. Scramble right, seam. Beautifully bowled. The extra bounce as well. Playing for the turn was Mark Boucher. Beaten in the air and off the pitch. Fifteen, the sixth over, Harbhajan. Keep Callis on strike, 104 now for 330 overs gone. level so we'll have to see how he matures He's certainly capable and then pretty much the bowlers so it'd be difficult to substitute Peterson from a batting point of view because then you you're gonna have to take a bowler out of the equation altogether South Africa go along for another five or six overs at six and over themselves to round about 140 and then have a little launch for the last 15 and that's pretty much the plan I don't think they're looking at much more than round about the 230 240 mark if they get really lucky in the last 10 Full house today here at the Wankade. Plenty of support for the Indian team. The rich had such a tendulka, always the one to get involved. Partnership of 30 between these two. 30 between Smith and Carlis. But it's taken its time, the partnership of Prince and Carlis. 41 of 76 balls. This again, 52 deliveries for 30. Probably will require one partnership at least in quick time. On the other hand, the Indians will be quite happy in not conceding the boundaries. He will six and over from here. We'll get South Africa to 230. Important 40 sticks. But not the usual strike rate that you would expect from Jacques Harris. Still five inside the ring for Murli Karthik. It's five from the over. And then nine for three.
nine for three then covers 47 from 86 Boucher 14 from 27 batting clearly not all that easy and the bowling very accurate especially this man the crowd would be very happy here a bit of a disappointment in Kolkata Turned up in big numbers, 50,000 the capacity here at the Wankhede. Big cheer when Rahul Dravid won the toss. And then picking up three important wickets. First wicket falling at six, second at 36, third at 77. In the air, momentarily. 96 balls now since the last boundary turned and stopped just a little bit it's also a matter of confidence that Harbhajan Singh has and Rahul Rabbit has in Harbhajan just three in the ring on the offside no protection in the deep that's a good sign There's a misunderstanding there. Wanted to run Jacques Carles. Mark Boucher was looking at the ball. And Boucher looking at the ball. You're quite right, Chiri. It's all about trusting the core. Standing over from Harbhajan, just two from it. 31 gone. Nelson for three. then for three two of those wickets to Irvin Patan one to Harbhajan Singh and these two Kartik and Singh have settled down very nicely Harbhajan's bowled seven overs for 18 Kartik is in his fifth over he's gone for 18 runs as well overs are flying by it's missing leg stump. It's the arm ball that uh, Murli Karthik goes wide of the stumps. It's your off stump hitting him middle and leg. He just slipped down leg side with the angle. Good deception with the arm ball. Gonna wide in. I feel a bit sorry for the bowler here because Boucher backed away to give himself some room and then nipped back inside it again. I was looking for a bit of width. The bowler doing the right thing by trying and following the batsman. We've been good, the Indians in the field. Patan, Yuvraj, Momakev been quite outstanding. When the South Africa are going to take the necessary risk to give them a comfort zone. And this moves to 49. It's 101 deliveries since the last boundary was hit. And that's a long, long time.
It's a big appeal. It's a better appeal. But still no change from umpire Harper. Very tight indeed. Thought about it for a long and hard time. Took his time. Oh, Mark Boucher lucky to survive. I just wonder whether he hasn't given him the benefit for a bit of height here. He did everything right, straightened, pitched and straightened. It was on line with the stumps. Oh, he won't get that one. It's nine yards down the wicket. Fine over, just two from it. 114 for three. One of the many uh, private hospitality boxes about half a kilometre away from the ground. 114 for three, South Africa. They need to do something. Callis misses an opportunity. He's crushed that he didn't hit that for four. It's a rare delivery for Harbajan to give him a little bit of width with only three saving one. And he knows that he's missed the boat there. Plenty of oohs and ahs there. Murli Karthik and Harbhajan bowling well in tandem. Kallis goes to 50. His 56th one day international and his 8th against India. Well, it's been hard work on this pitch. The ball was not coming onto the bat. The spinners bowling extremely well. Just three boundaries and strike rate of 52.6. For Jacques Carles, the important thing for him is to carry on. A lot of runs coming in the offside for Jacques Carles in this innings. Again, slower through the air. It's very displaced, quite nicely. Harbhajan Singh. Harbhajan Singh is now bowled eight overs to 21, and the score is 117 to three. Emergency, but the Indian spinners have bowled extremely well. Callis has uh, hit a couple of boundaries for sure, but the last boundary was over a hundred deliveries ago. So there's uh, a lot of work to do for South Africa. They'll want to get to somewhere around about 230, 240. To do that, they're going to have to score at around about seven runs and over from here on in. There's Jacques' wagon wheel. That's a good shot. That's four. That's four. At last. <laughs> Bit of a relief for the South Africans. Hey, no worries, no 
Lord. The two men in the deep there. There's a deep square leg and a deep, deep mid wicket. But he split the field to perfection. Picked it from a length. Nothing wrong with the delivery. But eight was one outstanding shot. Eighteen overs to come that boundary. Now, what happened during the drinks break? Was it okay, boys? It's uh, a little bit all or nothing. Shark, you be there in the 50th over, Bouch. Do what you can to up the run rate. He's going to look for two here. And it's a good job they didn't go. It looks like two when you play it in there gently, but it doesn't take long being a smallish ground for the field that actually get from the boundary to the, rope, to the ball. He played it with soft hands intentionally for the two, but the time doing a great job in the deep. Two men inside the ring is a mid on and a short fine leg, so there are open spaces. <laughs> Can Mark Boucher unable to get the placement? Yivraj Singh has done wonderfully well today in that point area. It's well bowled. Afforded him no room whatsoever. Five from the over despite the boundary. 122 for three. represent the power play that's why there's uh, a white one there the 16th over when we felt anyway that maybe Rahul Dravid had forgotten about signaling the power play and the town's getting a little bit smaller so South Africa needs some skyscrapers here's Sivag he's been uh, useful with the ball we're in the Sivag and I just get the feeling might be required to bowl at least seven overs here to fill in for Ajit Agarkar and Rudra Pratap Singh. He's got the ability to pick up wickets. And also looking at the slow nature of the pitch. And boundaries hard to come by against the spinners. It's not a bad move from Rahul Dravid. the partnership between uh, Harris and Boucher coming up 82 balls need to accelerate a bit and Jack is uh, just get the feeling this is the ideal opportunity to go after somebody like Varendra Sebal they'll go after somebody and they've got to go after who's ever bowling I think Yes, there's a preset plan, and they've set their stall towards around about 2.30, and they're saying, right, won a ball for six overs. But they've got to achieve that. It's no good doing it and or saying it, not achieving it. Gets you to around about 150, 160, and then 80 off the last 10. Attacking shot, but uh, brings no runs. 126 for three.
126 for three. 127 for three. And a 50 partnership between these two. It's taken a while. Just coming in singles. The option is there for both right handers to go over mid on. Five men inside the ring. There is a man at long off, but the mid on is fairly wide and inside the ring. Tempting the batsman to hit against the spin. Two here and get them. Yes, he will. He's found a gap wider. Tendulkar at uh, a deepish mid on. And the man on the deep mid wicket boundary. A lot more conventional on the outside. It's surprising we haven't seen too much turn from uh, Murli Karthik. So Harbhajan and Singh get a fair amount of turn and bounce. Again, change in field. Man from the offside, short third, man moving to short fine leg. And there is a short mid wicket as well. So the mid ons drop back. Oh, and he shouldn't have bowled it there. He's just taken a man out from there. Bowled it slowly and outside off stump. This is a huge over. <laughs> huge over. <laughs> Just at 74.8 k's, the last delivery. Very slow, enticing the batsman to drive. But that's when you want a more packed offside field. And back we are again. Three in the ring. Seven runs from the over. 33 for 3 then, this is the highest partnership of the game, but uh, it's taken 91 balls for the 56 runs to come. Something has to happen. And to make it happen for you, Ravi Shastri's with Mike Hazeman. Thanks Robin. Now South Africa have opted for the old-fashioned style of one-day cricket today. It's been cat and mouse for the last 60 minutes. There are not too many boundaries and just uh, noodling it around to a certain extent. Bato's hit it in the air, but it is going to be okay. I think he's uh, decided that he's going to try and take them on a bit here. They've got wickets at hand of the death. They have got some game breakers to come. But Boucher is key, Ravi. The key, and I just think he's waited five overs too long because he, he has the shots in his armory. I think one of these two players has to go, and it's Boucher. But from a fielding point of a fielding side point of view, uh, you know that uh, it could be a stage where you could get a wicket here. And one could lead to two in a situation like this. We've seen that happen so many times in one-day cricket. Then there is a sort of a partnership, but they're not quite getting away. And then you lose a wicket, and you lose uh, another one quickly. 
you're not going to get big boundaries against Harbour John Singh or Murali Kanti. This is the, the sort of bowling where you can score those boundaries from. So he's going to pace through the air, though. That's what have to work hard. Catless will continue to try and bat the majority of the overs, as was his game plan from ball one. Just the one. But the likes of Justin Kemp to come, providing he's well enough to bat. If he's not well enough to bat, you've got a question, uh, should he have played? Then, of course, you've got uh, Sean Pollock, who's a wonderful hitter of the ball. Johan Botta is someone who mustn't be underestimated this time of an innings as well. Just the single. Callas will retain the strike. Four runs off the 37th over. 137 for three. Just about six minutes past five on the Monday afternoon in uh, Mumbai at the moment. Sun is uh, getting a little bit low. Kartik continues. Now that's the sort of delivery that you've got to take full toll of, unfortunately, for South Africa. It's straight to Harbhajan Singh. No pace at all in that delivery. Short and wide and just the one. A great opportunity there. They've got to target uh, a couple of bowlers here, South Africa. If they, go, if they have to get some momentum going. There's a bit of a scramble, but it's OK as far as South Africa is concerned. Well, he had to hurry. Carlos. Touch and go if it was a direct hit. Got to start uh, thinking about this uh, airborne route. Justin Kemp is the ideal man to come in pretty soon to take full advantage of the overs that are left. And he's a very strong hitter. The track, I think, is a very good one, Ravi. It's a good one. There's, uh, it's not like every ball is turning. You've got to give it a rip for the ball to turn. It's coming on nicely to the bat. Maybe a little bit on the slower side, but the bounce is there. because the Indians won't mind this just giving runs and singles at this stage because you're bound to get a couple of dot balls in an over a couple of good overs is what South Africa need to get that momentum going I need to go at 8 and 0 from here to get to that 240 mark we've been talking about straight to the man Four off the over so far, one ball remaining. Kartik after this will only have two overs up his sleeve. He's been going at just a shade under five in his spell so far. And that'll end, bang on five. So 38 overs gone, 12 remaining now, 142 for three. Sixty-five of 103 balls. That's the stand between Callis and Boucher. Two best mates out there in the middle. Spin trio was doing a bit of strangling. Robert Cape doesn't mess around. It looks like they're waiting for ten overs to go before they actually uh, start trying to launch wherever they can. I'm with you, Ravi. A little bit too late.
it's allowing uh, Rahul Dravid to get uh, the overs out of the way quickly the, the kind of overs that uh, he would have worried about just in case uh, South Africa had uh, put the foot on the accelerator maybe six or seven overs ago overstepping Sawag not happy understandably so so that'll be bold again and what it is going to do is put enormous pressure on the guys to come. Now, these two men have been out there for some time and seen the ball nicely. But Callis will not uh, do anything too extravagant until right of the death. Enormous pressure is going to be on the likes of Kemp and Pollock and Johan Borta. Nice and fine from Callis. About to uh, his communication was a couple. And Callis agrees. Now here's a chance for one of those overs, Ravi, just to get them going. They're five off this, and they're halfway through. Well, this is the kind of ball where they have to take some risks. Especially if Boucher comes on strike, saying uh, we've got uh, five runs of the first four balls. If we get a boundary at this stage, that pushes it to nine. Because Dravid will be looking at the options he has at this stage. Just the one takes the Africa 149 for three after 39 overs. seeing those bowling figures Patan was outstanding seven overs for 12 he'll come back at a later stage but I think uh, Dravid has realized that spin is not such a bad option here
10 overs remaining. 8 and over from here gets them to 235. So 10 overs to go, and they've got 7 wickets in hand. It's a good position for them to really launch from here. They have no choice, really. 12th man, A.B. de Villiers, was out there having uh, quite a long chat with Boucher and also Callas. A change of this over. Sabre has got a change of this over. Sabre has gone up, but a little bit adventurous. He's a clever bowler in a situation like this. He mixes it up nicely. That would have gone down the leg side. But watch how he uh, alters the length as well. Full toss. Parmesan Singh is scooting around and does brilliantly. That save too. That might have been the momentum they were looking for, South Africa. Now, this is where India has been different in the last uh, couple of months. The standard of fielding has shown a huge improvement. Now, that's the effort required. What it does is uh, it puts more pressure on the South African batting side. That would have been a certain boundary. Now, in the mind of the batsman, he knows that uh, he needs to get a boundary quickly. What it also does is uh, it, it lifts the spirits of the fielding side. It uh, keeps everyone on their toes. It's hot, it's humid. And uh, we saw some fluids going out for Jack Hallis uh, at the end of the last over. South Africa will be hoping that he doesn't tire here and throw his hand in. Yes, they would have talked about the fact they need to get at least a boundary off every over from now on. So what a difference that field he might have uh, made in this over now from Harbajan. It just builds a bit more pressure for the South Africans. And I don't think Sayway could be providing the, uh, the same sort of flight that he did that last ball. Oh! Little off sharp turn, they scamper through for one. me what an outstanding catch that is from Harbhajan Singh magnificent fielding here on the over saved the boundary and now he's doubled up with a blinder Pudgy is all over the shop here at the Wankhede Stadium he's fielded magnificently and cut a certain boundary earlier in the over and have a look at this it's not easy when it comes out of the crowd diving forward taking the ball inches from the ground and Paji goes for a spin. 158 for four. Boucher gone for 35. Whenever Justin Kemp comes to the crease, he comes with an enormous amount of expectation. That strike rate of 94, his form has been good in the last 12 months or so. Averaging a shade under 37 now. And he has to go from ball one, basically. Yes, and India, in a situation like this, got to believe they can get another wicket. Because it's not easy to get after the bowlers straight away. But from a batting point of view, he has to do it in the next uh, couple of overs. So therein lies the opportunity. He does prefer the ball coming onto the bat from the seamers rather than the spinners. There's some more scrambling. 
Mark Boucher was under pressure to get a boundary. He tried, but Harbhajan Singh was sensational here. And the great thing about this catch is the way he's attacked the ball. So easy to take the safer route and hang back, save the boundary. But uh, Harbhajan thinks otherwise. That was magnificent. Five runs off the over, also the wicket of Mark Boucher, 160 for four. Nine overs remaining. Eight and over will get them just past that 230 mark. Yes, and Yuvraj Singh uh, will persevere with his main job will be to keep the ball up. Don't try and bowl too quick. Abhijan Singh still has overs up his sleeve. I think it's fair to say, Ravi, that uh, not in his wildest dreams, 12 months ago, Harbhajan have even expected to get close to this catch. That's the work they put in uh, training sessions, and it's paying off for India. And when you see this fielding side, uh, and then uh, you think about the fielding side you saw in Zimbabwe a month and a half ago, it's like chalk and cheese. It's hard work that's paying off. Even the veteran throwing, is throwing himself around. Kemp about to face his second ball. Hard into the ground. Crowd got excited. Yuvraj Singh has uh, just asked Long off to go a little bit wider. Kemp likes going straight back over the bowler's head rather than through extra cover in the air. Does pack a punch when he hits it. Tall man. He's already played some uh, match winning innings uh, for his side in the last uh, month or so, especially against the uh, New Zealanders. 22 off this over so far. And it's going to end up only three. That's a very good over for India. 42 gone. 163 for four. Quite content, Jacques Callas, to give Justin Kemp the strike. Yes, he's a big hitter. I heard Mark Hazeman saying a little while ago, and uh, just to add on to that, he's hit as many as uh, 27 sixes in his career. In fact, 30 sixes uh, this year. Pollock still to come. He'll be more comfortable against the offspin of Sawag with the ball turning in rather than going away from uh, him with Yuvraj Singh. But they need boundaries. They cannot continue in this mode. Pollock, I'm sure, is itching to get out there. But probably a case uh, we both have to go now. Callis has been there long enough. He's on 77, but I just get the feeling he's got to raise the bar now. Turn it on. India will be quite happy with the way things are going. And a couple of dot balls every over, runs still coming in uh, singles. He wants to come back for the second as Kemp. 
He do that uh, quite comfortable, those long legs of his. Just been rewarded, by the way, on the, uh, the test tour to Australia. Justin Kemp expecting him, South Africa, to fill that number six berth with the way that uh, test cricket has played these days. Five off the over, one ball remaining. Bit of sharp turn, leg side. Gets away with it, does uh, Verinda Sawak. 168 for four. Just the one boundary in 168 deliveries now. Quick look at the uh, South African squad to go to Australia. Only home for a couple of days and they're on the Silver Bird again. Nicky Bia gets a recall due to uh, performances back in South Africa whilst not here. Herschel Gibbs also back in the lineup. Garner Kruger, fast ball on the wickets at the start of the summer. Gets the nod. And also Jacques Rudolph strengthening the, uh, the middle order batting. That is uh, a tough series. Three test matches, a whole host of one days. Then, of course, Australia back to South Africa for three and six. No, I should get two there. Slight misfield, no, sent back. It was Yuvrat saying he's got a good arm. In fact, Yuvrat uh, is connecting the ball. Irfan Patan, I beg your pardon. Fast bowler with a strong arm. But I just feel uh, Mike, some mind games being played here. Callis might be waiting for the faster bowlers to come back on. Someone like Agarkar to bowl another three overs. Dravid, on the other hand, persevering with spin, keeping Callis waiting. So I just get the feeling he's got to go now. He's got to go after the spinners. Well, Harbhajan's still got a couple of overs to go. Morley Kartik also a couple. So there's a bit of sabotage going on here from Rahul Dravid. The spinner's staying in operation. He will know that that's the plan from the South Africans. Three runs off this over only, and still just one ball remaining. He's tried this time. He's gone straight back over the bowler's head, and he's got himself a boundary. Good way to finish the over. That'll be the start for Justin Kemp. Seven from the over, 175 for four. There are just six overs remaining now in this innings. The run rate has been hovering at four, basically from ball one. Harbhajan Singh back into the attack. His return has uh, just been magnificent today. Going at just over two and a half per over and has taken an outstanding catch to get rid of Mark Boucher, who's always so dangerous towards the end of an innings. Well, he's not only bowled well, he's uh, fielded magnificently. Talked about that catch, but a couple of uh, excellent stops in the field. He's been uh, a busy man out there. The other thing, Ravi, we're definitely seeing a bit more turn now on this track. Yes, this ball getting a little older and softer. So gripping the surface. It normally does turn here in Mumbai. If you're prepared to give it a rip. You will get some purchase out of the surface. Solidly struck. Just the one, though. 
and experience in the spin departments for South Africa's concerned with Johan Berta who's uh, showed promise in this trip and of course uh, Robin Peterson as the super sub, a left arm orthodox spinner who hasn't uh, had a ball for South Africa for a long time it's clever bowling very important as a spinner you think this of the situation of the game he doesn't want to give boundaries now so a top spinner pitched right up and that spin can just hit you down the ground again it's just the one they need to go at 10 and over now to get to that 230 mark we've been talking about sometimes in a situation like this uh, as a bowler an over pitch delivery is uh, a very handy ball if you can bowl it right up into the stumps Cries of catch it and a wicket. Justin Kemp, a danger man, has gone. Greg Chappell may be a little bit of a sigh of relief. He knows that his spinners have done an outstanding job today. Harwood on Singh straight back into the attack. And he snares one. First bouncer, now Kemp. Two wickets in quick succession. Just what the crowd wanted. And really very difficult now for South Africa to uh, get on with it. Kemp, a big hitter. Out to a soft dismissal, just looking to paddle it round the corner, top edge. What a day he's having, Harbhajan Singh. Wickets, catches. South Africa, 178 for five. Forty-five overs gone, 178 for five. The strangulation for the spinners continues. Sean Pollock at the crease now. Strike rate of uh, 83. Oh, this is it a shade under 25? 950s. He's a power player. Here's Sean Pollock. And of course, that uh, the man that's just departed, Justin Kemp, will be very disappointed that he's uh, back in the pavilion. This is the situation that he likes to finish a game. And just obviously holding up a little bit on the track from Harbhajan Singh at almost uh, the back of the bat, top edge. Brings Yuvraj Singh into the game and Kemp is on his way so that was a crucial wicket Boucher goes the score of 158 Kemp the score of 178 and Callis is still there and the commentary box to take it through to the end of uh, this innings it's going to be Arun Lal and Robin Jackman thanks very much Mike there's not a lot to come after after this all these two, there is of course Johan Boerter and then the bowlers. At the same time there aren't many overs left, so Pollock's virtually got to go from ball one. Somehow felt that the South Africans sort of held back and just waiting for the right time which just never came for them. It's not easy to come in on a wicket like this and start blasting away. The set batsmen have to really stand up and be counted now that obviously is a big stride forward struck outside the line but when you come in on a wicket like this which is slightly slower than normal you could have problems getting quick runs there's a glimpse of what there is to come and it's basically water and the bowlers and you're quite right uh, Arun you I like the way you put it, they were waiting to make something happen and, and never seemed to quite 
find the ball to make it happen and one ball goes by and then another goes by and before you know where it is it's the end of the over and you've got three off it and that happened for ages but they, to me they're a, a, a batsman light in, in, in the middle of this and it's always the old story of the business of naming your super sub it's all very well. I mean, naturally, the best super sub in the world to have is, is, is an all-rounder, which Peterson is. But uh, you can't utilise his batting without taking a bowler out of the equation when, when you're in trouble. Pollock, has he got that through the gap? Yes, he has. Good footwork. Made it into a full toss and picked the gap perfectly. 185 for five. So, 185 for five, Harbhajan Singh. And there's a man who's got uh, 83, you know, 84 now, looking to play the ball through the offside. It's an inside edge onto the onside. Well, there are five wickets in hand, Robin, and still Carlos is not searching for those boundaries. He's willing to take the single and let Pollock do the damage. No doubt he's played a terrific role and uh, they do have a bit of a tail in this match. But I think it's time that he also had a bit of a blast. He's got to, he's got to, he's got to try and score virtually two boundaries and over. Um, in these last five. But I guess it isn't as easy as it seems. That's nicely played. That's cleverly played. And we'll probably get to the boundary. Oh. <laughs> there was a moment when it wasn't going to. And then there was a moment when it was. Little Sachin Tendulka there got the dive in a fraction early, I think. Well, that's very cleverly done by Pollock. Certainly not easy there. But the slide never happened for him. He just got stuck. I guess the idea is uh, to drop on your knee, I wouldn't know, I never did any of this, but and slide alongside the ball, and if anything, your weight overtakes the ball. And Sachin got the slide in and stopped in the sand, and the ball kept going. The boundary in the over, seven so far from it, but one more delivery to go in the 47th. And you, South Africa, still have five wickets. I certainly feel that there really should be a lot more urgency than is being shown at the moment. Single, maybe. They'll probably come back for the second, no, they don't. So Pollock will retain strike. 47 gone, three to go, 193 for five. Ninety-three for five. Eighteen balls of this innings to go. Reminded that the Indians don't um, roll any wides or no balls. Mm, 
to say that South Africa off those 18 needs something like 35, 37. Pollock down the wicket, over the top, into the stand, way into the stand. On the rafters. That's more like it. That's what they should be doing. Very handsomely done. Attacked it perfectly with the spin straight over the top. You know, need a few hits like those. That brings up the 200, that single. He's a really sweet striker of the ball, Sean Pollock. Crashes into the advertising hoarding at the top of the stand. One more to Cullis. He's come from over the wicket now. He's not going to give uh, a flight to Pollock. He's going to keep it tight and around that leg stump area. Well, they wouldn't mind it too much should some singles be conceded. They'd want it now. A single is like a dot ball in these circumstances. It's well bowled. He ran at him and then he saw him coming. Dragged it down, bowled it quicker. out the man Patek recovers 6, 7, 8, 9 from the over 202 for 5 Taylor, two cities really. Vegas on the left and some little village in the Cotswolds on the right. Nelson Park. Tan now coming back into the attack. Brilliant opening spell. Seven overs, two for 12. He really has done damage throughout this series to South Africa up front, except for the last game, and of course they won by 10 wickets. Fine leg is in the circle. That was, a, that was well bowled. Pollock was making space for himself. Managed to get it right into the block hole. There's a lot of pressure on Patan now. Five deliveries to bowl. He'd be very happy if he can get away with just about seven or eight runs in the over. That will be the endeavour to try and put it into the block hole, maybe mix it up with the slower one as well. Driven down a long off. That's exactly as a bowler where you want every ball to be hit. And a bit of luck, get the Yorker absolutely right and it only gets back to you. And you create a dot ball out of it, but if you're just driven a long on and long off for one, you're doing your job. be very pleased with the first three deliveries now he's got to guard that boundary we've got the fine leg up he's just got to keep it in the block hole and very straight indeed don't give any space at all either side of the wicket that's a beautiful stroke fairly sped away beautiful shot he made his own space there Carlos also got the length, got the full toss, he knew exactly where he was going to hit it. 
stayed outside that leg stump and crashed it past extra cover for four. Wonderful hit there by Kallis. Down two, long on and out. Sarpatan kept his head, kept it full. And that's a good catch. That went very, very flat. And Kallis goes, finally. He held the innings together, no doubt, but somewhere one felt that he sort of didn't quite time the spurt that was required. And eventually holding out to Mohammed Kef at long arms. Kallis departs for 91. Wicket to the Indians, South Africa, 209 for six. fourth game he's got off the mark and he will retain the strike for the last over of the innings 210 for six Two hundred and ten for six. So Cullis getting out in the 90s makes him uh, the man who's got out in the 90s most for South Africa in one day international six times. Hansi Cronier had shared it with him on five prior. Now the last over, he's going to be bowling it over the wicket, trying to hit those rough areas on the leg stump. You've got to go against the turn and over the top. It's not going to give you too much to play with, Murli Karthik. I have three men in the deep on the onside. Stumped him. He stumped him. He's going to have a look, the umpire, but I think he's got him. Neat work by Dhani. Bit of a fumble, but he recovered quickly. Let's see if it was quick enough. Doesn't matter, it's a dot ball in any case. That's where the bit of a fumble. And maybe just time enough to come in. Yeah, he's back, isn't he? He's back. There's the fumble. And I think if we just put the bales back there, we'll see the bats over the line. Safe. I think the important point is that it was a dot ball. Green light comes on, not out, color. This is where he fumbled, if he got it right, that should have been out. But sometimes it's difficult because it comes between bat and pad on the onside. away just for one clever bowling there Pollock trying to make place for himself to go over the offside 
just not giving it to him, following him. Karthik. very quick to get off the long on boundary there really no need to go for this throw if at all he's got to go to Karthik he's hit that for four he's very precise about that Pollock he now knows where Karthik's going to bowl it and he got himself into a good position just to bunt that through mid wicket He's played an in important innings. These are very important runs. Graham Pollock has come and scored 26 of 16. One delivery to go. It's out into the deep. There's a man making his way around, but he isn't going to get there. It's four more. Graham would be very proud. So a good innings from Sean Pollock. 11 off the last over. Gives South Africa. 221 and here's the final shot of the innings I thought it had gone to the sweeper for a moment but he found the gap yet again wonderful innings Rahul Dravid would be satisfied with the day's proceedings 221 they would have taken at the start of the game and uh, they should feel pretty pleased with 221 they have a fight on their hands mind you they've got a lot of work to do 221 is on the board they've got to chase it 